Chapter 4, Dark Clouds The alarm clock which I've kept for ten years, rang in my ear. I silently and quickly reached for it, and without a second thought, I roughly pressed the snooze button. It tumbled off the mini table with one last squeal. This clock has taken way more damage than this so I don't care. It's already six o'clock, in the end, I only slept for about two hours and it was already morning. I took off my pajamas, which I didn't know when I had changed into, and headed to the sink in my underwear with heavy steps. As I did so, I picked up the alarm clock and found that the battery cover attached with cellophane tape had come off and a battery had fallen to the floor. I guess I was a little too rough. I'll be more careful tomorrow, so forgive me. I then stepped in front of the mirror. Oh my, I couldn't possibly show my face in front of the students in my current state. I've been relatively sleep deprived for the past few days and the dark circles under my eyes look even more visible today. After washing my face carefully, I put together a list of cosmetics that I rarely use. I don't want my students to know that I'm in a bad or unstable state. As I picked up a bottle of lotion, my eyes suddenly met with my own in the mirror. Without thinking, I touch my cheek. The elasticity and tactile sensation coming from my fingertips will never be the same as when I was in school. I've grown old, haven't I? It's only been a little more than 10 years, but it's still 10 years. That's how long it's been since I've seen him, and I can't help but be reminded of. Is such a thing trivial? It's not that I've started to understand reality just now. I've known it all along. I resume my halted movements, open the lid, and silently begin applying makeup. One day it will come. I knew this from the moment I decided to become a teacher. I should have known, but I wasn't really ready for it. Calm down. This isn't my fight. The situation is different from that time. I'm sure my current class will be able to get through this without a hitch. Yes, they should. It's useless to be nervous. I felt my heart beating faster and tried to convince myself that this was just like the other exams. Such shallow thinking did not work, and my heart beat faster and faster. At this rate, I won't be able to hold myself together until the end of the special exam. I can't imagine what the future holds. Prepare yourself, I muttered to myself as I pressed both palms against the mirror and glared at my reflection. Part 1 A teacher's morning is surprisingly busy. At this school, I live in a dormitory, and I work on the premises, which means I'm always close to the school. However, there is a lot to do. I have to prepare for class, check my emails, and sometimes check the pool's water quality. However, the start time of the workday is the same as the start of homeroom so it's practically like service overtime. After the morning preparations are over, there is a morning meeting with the other teachers. Especially on days when special exams are held, the rush is doubled or tripled. There is absolutely no room for error on the part of the school, as it will affect the lives of the students, and then some. In this special exam, our teacher's utmost concern should be to not intervene in the exam. We want to protect the students in our own class, but we can't help them unintentionally, please avoid such a situation. Akari Sensei, who had gathered the homeroom teachers of the four classes and was auditing this special exam, warned us with a stern face. Um, I know it's a little late, but do you have a minute? What is it, Hashinomiya Sensei? As I recall, the last time this exam was held, 11 years ago, a measure was taken to shuffle the teachers so that they would not be assigned to the same class, right? So why is it that this time the homeroom teacher is still looking after their own class? If you are concerned about fairness, I think you should change it. As far as issuing a warning, I could sense the school's intention to stop the homeroom teacher's intervention. But surely it would be better to leave the other classes in charge. Not many teachers would go to the trouble of risking their lives to help a rival class. Isn't it because you believe that fairness will be maintained? Sake Inagasensei who was listening to the conversation, analyzed it calmly. Is that so? I can't tell you for any other reason than because that's the decision. So the top brass decided it, in all the special exams, there is nothing that we, a single teacher, can decide. It's decided by Chairman Sakayanagi and those who are involved in the management and operation of this school. All we can do is follow the rules and try to make it work. However, it didn't seem to make any sense, and Chie didn't even try to hide her dissatisfaction. Akari sensei, who could not bear to see this, opened his mouth in a low voice. This is my own personal imagination, but this special exam has the potential to look inside the minds of students. 
to see existences they've kept hidden. It is a massive chunk of information. I think they thought that by leaking it to the teachers of other classes, it would in turn affect the next special exam. Doesn't that mean that they don't believe in us teachers after all? It can't be helped, can it? This special exam, the three homeroom teachers seem to have experienced the same thing in the past and, isn't that also the reason why they each took the class they were in? Charge of in the in-class voting held last year. That's what I thought. Chia seemed to be convinced once again, as if to say that she had known it from the beginning. Hashinomi Yasensei, can we proceed? Sure, whatever. I'm somewhat convinced, so please proceed. Akari Sensei resumed his explanation as if he had given up, though Chia was clearly in a bad mood. If the supervisor deems it to be advice, you will be warned. If it is repeated, there will be a pay cut. Also, I am not worried about you all, but I would like to make sure that the students make the choice on their own. Remember that if you are judged to have intervened in a malicious manner, such as intentionally leading, you may be demoted at worst. The unanimous special exam is all about choices. If a teacher acts in a way that shoulders and leads to a particular choice, it's only natural that the nature of the special exam itself will be questioned. Of course, neither the teachers of the other classes nor I have any such intentions. We just proceeded as usual, solemnly and quietly, without getting too emotionally involved with the students. That is something that will not change even if this is a special exam. Filled with bitter memories. That's all. Now, please take care of the special exam. After that, I tried to keep things as usual and got through the morning class. No, I was the only one who thought it was business as usual, but in reality, it most definitely wasn't. I had no sense of time, and before I knew it, it was lunch. On the desk in the staff room was a half-eaten meal. About a third of the way down my throat, my chopsticks stopped moving. Not wanting to be seen like this, I put the rest of my lunch in a bag and put it away. As I left the staff room, staring at the floor, I heard the sound of footsteps coming from behind me. It's finally here, S.A.E. Chan. Words of wisdom or something. You've been like that since this morning, I noticed. You couldn't sleep last night because you were thinking about the special exam, right? I tune out the obvious and cheap provocation. No, it would be more correct to say that I couldn't answer back. This class has nothing to do with me. It doesn't matter if the students clear it easily or not. Hmm? You don't seem to truly feel that way. Whatever, just know that SAE Chan doesn't have the qualifications to aim for class A. Never. Forget that. As I walked away, Chia's voice was filled with resentment and she didn't bother to hide it. I was unable to raise my head until I turned the corner. Part 2 September 17th. After lunch break. Less than three weeks after the summer break, the next special exam arrived. When I came back to the classroom about five minutes before the exam started, there was already one adult waiting in the classroom. He was quietly watching the students from the back of the classroom. What surprised me a little was that I was instructed to sit not in my seat, but in a seat that was designated only for this exam. I wondered if they were trying to be more strict with the rules. Interestingly enough, I was seated at the very back of the class, near the window, where I had sat in my first year. The rest of the students were randomly assigned to seats regardless of their placement last year or this year. I just happened to be in similar seats it seems. Sato sat down to my right. The students began to arrive one after another. The test we are going to take is the unanimous voting special test. It's a simple test, nothing more, nothing less, in which you have to choose from multiple options. Five questions given by the school and repeat them until you reach unanimous agreement. There are not many things worth mentioning about this special exam, but there are also few countermeasures that can be taken in advance. Regardless of the content of the question, there is no communication during the first round of voting, so there is a promise to spread out the votes to avoid unexpected unanimity. Be aware of the time limit for voting. Decide in advance who you will follow in the event of a dispute over which option to choose. This is the only thing that any class can do. This is why there is almost no heavy atmosphere in the class. The fact that this exam is easily achievable for all participants, ultimately all you have to do is choose an option and press the vote button, is another reason why it is so loosely regarded. There is some tension, of course, because it is a special exam. The tablet had a film firmly attached to it to prevent prying eyes. Even if you peeked in from the seat next to you, you wouldn't be able to steal a look at the screen. 
Since you can't leave your seat while voting, it's impossible to narrow down where others are voting by sight, even if they could see the results of a third. Parties vote by some means or accident, whether they would believe it is another story. In the first place, it is impossible to make a fuss about who voted for whom, since snooping is forbidden. We had to face this special test head on. Also, the tablets on the desk seemed to be turned off, and it was forbidden to even turn on the main power without permission. Hey, 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 if we clear it in an hour or two, let's go to the Kiyaki Mall. Yeah, I'd love to, but I'm pretty sure I have to study in the dorm. So can we go in the evening? I can Shinohara, who have become a close couple, discuss what to do after school. Is it a special exam that can be easily cleared? It's questionable how many students understand that it can turn into a difficult question depending on the conditions. The problem is that the voting is anonymous. It is impossible to know who voted for which option, not only during the exam, but forever. Total anonymity. It's all about how big of an impact this factor will have on this special exam. Anyway, the time limit for the special exam is 5 hours, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m., a very long time. If you think about it simply, you are allowed to spend one hour per question. It would not be surprising if the special exam was completed in one or two hours as I said. And if you complete it within the time limit, you can easily get 50 class points. On the other hand, if you fail to complete the exam within five hours, you will lose 300 class points so making all five questions unanimous is an absolute must. Looking back on the content of the exam, I can say that the small rewards and heavy penalties are understandable. I sat down at my seat in the corner of the classroom, where half of the students were seated. On the side of the podium, the facilitator of this special exam, Chibashara Sensei, and the teacher in charge of monitoring, are stationed at the back of the classroom. As I told you beforehand, all communication devices will be collected. Restrictions on what luggage can be brought in, monitoring from the front and back to prevent peeking at the tablets. They're being more thorough than they need to be. That's how much they want to prevent people from knowing who voted for which side. It may sound harsh, but it's the right thing to do. In order to reflect the genuine feelings of the students in the multiple choices, the anonymity must be 100%. If there is a chance to spy on them, the probability that they will succumb to peer pressure increases. There will naturally be betas and alphas. This could work to the advantage of students who are looking to get ahead. However, this is not a good thing for the school, because they want everyone to be unanimous, regardless of whether it is peer pressure or not. Anyway, there is no room for cheating. No matter what the question is, it must be unanimous. Look, Ari, you need to go say it properly, okay? Hmm? When I returned my gaze from looking out the window to the inside of the classroom, I saw Ari being pushed around by Harika. Ah, Kiyotaka-kun. If you're interested in coming with us, you have some time after school, right? She appealed with her eyes. I wanted to talk to you about the cultural festival. I see. I thought we should talk in person, too, and I don't mind. Oh, thank you. I'll see you later, then. After running away, Ari took a seat in the far seat and turned her back. I managed to calm that girl down. It doesn't mean her heart is healed, but she's trying to move forward. She didn't even try to mention it in front of me, trying her best to make eye contact. But it remains to be seen whether or not she'll really take it on. It's up to Kiapon, do your best. I'll try to negotiate as hard as I can. Yeah, I'll see you after school. They're really good at taking care of each other, or rather, they've been together a lot lately, those two. Two minutes before the start, the homeroom teacher, Chibashara Sensei, begins to explain. Well, it's about time. We will now move on to the special exam. But since today is a long day, we will have up to four bathroom breaks. Basically, we can only take a break before we get unanimous consent to take on the next question. This means that we can't take a break in the middle of the day when we haven't reached unanimous agreement. Also, each break is a maximum of 10 minutes. But the test time continues to be counted. It will be important to skip breaks if you deem them unnecessary. All of us had already gone to the bathroom as announced so there would be no problems for a while. There didn't seem to be any students in the class who had stomach aches or other unexpected health problems. Now it was time for the special exam to begin. I thought so, but Chibashara Sensei just stood there and stared at the students absent-mindedly. The students didn't care at first but then started to look at each other noticing something was off. 
The teacher standing at the back of the classroom also seemed to have noticed something strange. Chibashara Sensei, it's time for you to go. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. We will now begin the unanimous special examination. From here on out, we will proceed according to the rules, so if you leave your seats outside of the interval, or if you chat during forbidden times, you will be warned without mercy. Be mindful of this. The countdown starts at 26 seconds, probably due to a slight delay in the start signal, but I'm sure it won't affect the students. When the count reaches zero, the text switches to show the first question. Question 1 Choose which class you want to face in the final exam in the third semester. Even if there is a change in class rank, this choice will take precedence. The numbers in parentheses indicate the additional class points you can earn by winning the match. Choices Class A, 100, Class B, 50, Class D, 0, this is the last trimester of the second year, and the choices are used to determine the opponents for the special exam at the end of that school year. As mentioned above, if you unanimously choose Class A, your opponent will be the Class A and additional class points at the time of this choice, even if the current Class A falls to Class B by the end of the school year. Also, if the combination of the desired options was a disagreement between all classes, the school will decide randomly. In simple terms, the choice of who would you rather fight, Sakayanagi, Ryuan, or Ichinos. The opponent chosen here will not be changed. It's important to figure out which class we can fight and win. Of course, we won't necessarily be able to fight the class we want, but, if Horikita and the others nominate Sakayanaga's class, and Ichinos also nominates Sakayanaga's class at the same time, does that mean that Sakayanaga's class is left to choose between Horikita's class and Ichinos' class? And if Sakayanaga's class chose Ryuan's class and not either of them, then it would be left to Ryuan's class to confirm their choice. If Ryuan's class avoided Sake and Aga's class, then the result would be a random combination. Normally, you would want to choose a lower class with lower strength. However, as you can see from the choices, the treatment of the higher classes seems to be a little different. If you are able to defeat a higher class, you will be rewarded with extra class points. If you fight a lower class, you will not get any additional rewards. Normally, we would want to avoid fighting class A, but if these advantages exist, there will be enough room for consideration. Then we'll move on to the first round of voting. The time limit is 60 seconds. If these 60 seconds are exceeded, it will go into penalty time. Of course, Horikita had informed us beforehand so that we wouldn't have to deal with that kind of trouble the first time around. The classmates voted for their favorite options as they saw fit. I had agreed with Horikita that I would always vote for the first choice, so without hesitation, I chose class A the first choice. Horikita probably chose class B, the second choice. At this point, it's never going to be unanimous, but the other 37 votes are purely to see which class they want to face. Now that everyone has voted, I will now announce the results of the voting. Results of the first round of voting class A. 5 votes class B, 21 votes class D, 13 votes the votes were concentrated on class B, to which Ichinos belongs, instead of class D, the lowest class. Since the vote was not unanimous, we will now set an interval. From this point on, the students were allowed to leave their seats freely for 10 minutes to contact the students or have a conversation. It doesn't matter if you raise your voice a little, or if you only give an earful to certain students. So that we don't waste time from the first question, let me make a suggestion first. Raising her hand, Horikita, who was sitting in front of the Chibashara Sensei, stood up and then turned around. Since she was to be the leader of this special exam as well, she would take the initiative to show her actions. As the votes are scattered, each of us must have something to think about. You can ask as many questions as you want, and don't hesitate to express your opinions to the whole class. With that, Horikita took a breath and began to state her preferred option. My ideal opponent to fight at the end of the school year would be Class B. In other words, I figured it would be Ichino-san. There are three reasons for this. 1. Unlike Sake and Nagasan, and Ryu and Kun, Ichino-san is likely to be a fair fight, a clash of pure potential. Even if it's an irregular special exam, there's little worry that we'll be outsmarted. Secondly, they are currently in Class B. We'll get class points in addition to our rewards, which will give us an edge over the other classes. The third and final point is that the Class B title is a sham. We are already side by side with 
Ryuan Kun's class D. At one time, she was far ahead in class points, but her class is now on a downward slope. I think that makes her an ideal opponent. She spoke rather quickly, perhaps because she was concerned about time, but her reasoning was clear, and it seemed to have resonated with many of the students. If any students have any objections, I would like them to voice their opinions here. And now, if, on the other hand, you think that class B is okay, then you can vote for class B as soon as possible and we can talk about it. I would like to get a unanimous vote on this issue for the second time. I can feel Horikita's intention. As if in response, Yasuk stands up as well. I also agree with what you just said, Horikita-san. The additional reward for defeating Sake and Nagasan and the rest of class A is huge, but there's no doubt that they are stronger enemies than anyone else. Of course, the strong bonds and solid fighting style of Ichino-san and the others won't be easy to overcome, but I think they are the best opponents. With the two of them pushing for B class, the direction of the classmates began to take shape. Then, as if to bring the flow of events to a head, one more person, still seated, offers an opinion to match. I think I'll go with Ichino's San too. I don't think it's fair that we don't get any additional rewards for fighting Ryuan Kun's class, and it wouldn't be funny if we lost to Sake and Agasan's class. Before any opposition could be raised, Yasuk and Kei quickly solidified their opinions by voting for Class B. It could be said that they went with the follow-up as planned, but it was probably safe to assume that the two of them also wanted to fight with Class B. The fact that Class B received the most votes in the first round of voting was a clear indication of this. The interval, which lasted nearly six extra minutes, eventually passed without any dissenting opinions. While checking the time, Chibashara Sensei resumed the proceedings that had been halted. Then we will move on to the second vote as the time has expired. As soon as the tablet screen changes, you have 60 seconds to cast your vote. I explained to you beforehand, if you go past 60 seconds, the penalty time will accumulate. Be careful. That caution was unnecessary, and in less than 10 seconds, everyone had voted the second time. The results were immediately reflected and displayed on the monitor. Results of the second round of voting class A, 0 votes class B, 39 votes class D, 0 votes without Koenji jokingly putting in a vote for another class, we succeeded in getting the first unanimous vote with a smooth start. By unanimous consent, the first question shall be finalized with the choice of class B. I will inform you of the class you will face in the final exam as soon as it is officially decided, but that will be after tomorrow. In just 10 minutes or so, we had completed one of the five questions. We were also able to vote for the class B that Horikita and the others wanted to face. For me personally, if I had to choose a partner to fight, I would have definitely chosen Ichino's class. Horikita had already said all the reasons for this, so there was nothing to add. All that was left was to hope that Sakayanagi and Ryuan's classes would match up, but since Ichino's class was sometimes easy to target, there might be three classes competing for her. Let's hope it won't be too much trouble and Ichino's class will choose our class in return. I don't think we need to take a break, but just to make sure, I'll ask. You don't mind if we move on to the next question, do you? Of course, no one from the student body objected, so the second question began immediately. Now then, let's move on to the second question. Question 2 Choose a destination you would like to see for the school trip scheduled for late November. Choices Hokkaido Kyoto Okinawa What is this? I heard a voice leak out from one of the students. Since private conversations were not allowed in the school, the voices were quickly drowned out by the sharp stares of Chibashara Sensei. However, it is undeniable that many students were thinking, what the hell is this? Even so, we can't even talk about it until we have voted first. The only way to vote is to genuinely think about which option to choose for yourself. This vote is the same as the previous one, and this one is not final. The results may change depending on the situation of the remaining three classes, so be sure to understand that. Results of the first round of voting 17 votes for Hokkaido 3 votes for Kyoto 19 votes for Okinawa with the exception of Kyoto, the voting results were shown to be much closer than before. Since the vote was not unanimous, we will now have an interval. Hey, hey, can we call this a special test? I mean, it's a piece of cake. When the interval came, Hondo said with a laugh as if he was out of sync. It's true that the first and second questions don't need to be asked in such an ostentatious manner. 
They could be summarized in the course of Home Roam. It's only been two questions. After this, two-fifths of the special exam would be over. The content is too easy. Many of the students were probably starting to relax more than they were nervous. However, it is interesting to note that there are some students who become more anxious as the situation increases. Typical of these are the cautious and thoughtful students like Horikita and Yasuk. While everyone is laughing and discussing which way to go, they are looking at the question seriously. I guess maybe they have a valid reason not to be worried. It was hard to believe that such a question that was going to be taken seriously. However, the easier the first part is, the more pressure there will be on the second half. With this premonition in mind, I quietly watched the flow of the interval. I'm sure we all have our own thoughts. But let's focus on this question first. Wary of getting distracted, Yasuk pulls the entire class back together. The first time, it was more or less a split between Hokkaido and Okinawa, so what are we going to do now? It is definitely an important vote to decide the school trip destination. Horikita-san, it looks like we're divided in our opinions, do you have any advice for us? Kushida was worried about Horikita, who didn't speak up right away unlike before. However, Horikita didn't reply immediately, and for a moment, the room went silent. Horikita-san. Kushida called out her name again with a bit of concern, and Horikita hurriedly answered. I'm sorry. I've been thinking about it for a bit. It's not a complicated choice, but I thought it might be surprisingly hard to make it unanimous. The school trip is an important event for us students, and of course I can't summarize its destination in a single word. I promised to follow the leader if things went wrong but that still didn't mean that Horikita alone could decide the destination of the school trip. It's a tough choice, considering it's a matter of preference, not merit, or demerit. Anyway, I guess we'll just have to start by asking you to give us your opinion on your preferred travel destination. As if he had been waiting for that, Sudo raised his hand. Okay, I'll start. I want to go to Okinawa. Okinawa is the most popular school trip because of the ocean, right? It's got the most votes, so I guess it's settled, right? Wait a minute. I'll admit that Okinawa is one of the standard places, but if you say that, then. So is the North Coast Highway. It's not even a close call in terms of votes. Don't you want to go skiing or something? Mizuno, who seemed to have voted for Hokkaido, said in opposition to Sudo. I'd like to go to Okinawa. I want to go snorkeling. I've been to Okinawa a few times, so Hokkaido is my choice. The two travel destinations with close vote counts start to disagree head-on. Since they both chose the destination they thought was best for them, it's not surprising that they are critical of the other options. In the first place, there's only snow in Hokkaido, right? It's definitely boring. Well, if you put it that way, Okinawa is nothing but ocean, isn't it? They argued for a few minutes, with no end in sight, until Yasuk intervened. Hokkaido and Okinawa are both equally popular destinations for school trips, so I guess it's not unreasonable to get into trouble, but you might want to be a little more considerate of the others. Yasuk appealed to her to stop speaking out of turn. The first part of the conversation had been about how wonderful their chosen destination was, but now it was turning into a discussion of how to humiliate the other person's choice. Hirata Khan picked Hokkaido, right? Hey Hirata, you chose Okinawa, didn't you? W well, I mean, Sandwiched between both groups, Yasuk gives a troubled look. That's a bit, secret, isn't it? In this situation, it's hard to answer which one he put in. In a way, this is the moment when the anonymous name comes alive. The only place you can swim in November is Okinawa, right? Don't you want to go to the beach? I don't want to go to the ocean anymore. I've had enough after the island. Hokkaido for sure. The discussion was interrupted once, but it soon became heated again. The exchange between Sudo and Mizuno could probably be seen as a microcosm of the entire class opinions. Oh my, what should we do, Horikita-san? With a troubled look on her face, Kushida asks. Horikita for help. We're in a tough spot I suppose. The difficulty of unanimity. Maybe they've been given a problem that will bring it to the surface sooner rather than later. There was no easy way to wrap up the conversation, and the ten-minute interval was coming to an end. Incidentally, I'm thinking of voting for Kyoto this second time. Kyoto has a deep history. I had a strong desire to see that scene. So, now that all the voting for the second round is complete, the results will be displayed.
Results of the second round of voting 18 votes for Hokkaido 4 votes for Kyoto 17 votes for Okinawa Ah, Hokkaido did a reversal. We did it. Damn, who switched from Okinawa to Hokkaido. It was almost a 50-50 split, although Hokkaido was slightly ahead with more votes than before. However, both the Hokkaido and Okinawa groups start arguing over the votes that were moved. No matter how many times the voting is repeated, it will never be settled. The only sad thing is that it's not being talked about at all. It's just about the votes now. Perhaps the votes of Horikita, who first chose option 2, Kyoto, did not move. Of course, it's possible that Horikita voted for Hokkaido or Okinawa and someone else voted for Kyoto, so we can't be sure, but there is a way to force the vote to go to the one with the most votes, but that is likely to leave a lasting grudge. If Hokkaido had won twice in a row, Okinawa would have won the first round of voting. It can't be helped. I guess we'll have to settle for a winner. There are three people who want Hokkaido, and three people who want Okinawa. We'll choose a representative for each end. Have them play rock paper scissors. We'll choose the spearhead, the middleman, and the general, and play a winner-take-all game. However, Kyoto, with its low number of votes, will be left with only one representative. It's a tough fight, but we'll try to keep it as fair as possible. It would certainly be unfair for the minority group of Kyoto to be able to fight on equal terms with the other two. If we want to put it together without coercion and time, we should do it this way. It's inevitable that there will be some dissatisfaction, but if the rules are set at the beginning, there's no choice but to follow them. While there was some wrangling over who would be the representative of the Rock Paper Scissors team, the contestants were soon chosen. The Hokkaido team, spearheaded by Mizuno, middleweight Ishigura, and General Shinohara. This is a women's team. Okinawa team, spearhead, Onadira, middle, Hondo, general, Tsudo, mixed gender team. Also, whoever voted for Kyoto, can you join us for rock paper scissors? Horikita hopes to have one representative. Then one man raises his hand in full. If no one else is willing to participate, I'll be the captain. I'll definitely bring everyone to Kyoto. It was Kaisei who expressed his strong will and threw himself into the fierce battle. He was the first student from the Kyoto selection to speak out. Kyoto is also my preferred school trip destination. I'm counting on you to take care of me, Kaisei. It's going to be a tough fight, but I hope you can pull it off. In order to make it to the third round of voting, the Rock Paper Scissors game was quickly started. The Okinawa team easily won the match. The Kyoto team's dream was shattered in an instant, and they left the battlefield with a broken heart. It was a fleeting moment. Less than 10 seconds after Kaisei had come forward, I witnessed Horikita put her hand on her forehead and sigh, and I was convinced that she was one of those who wanted to go to Kyoto. The game continued as if the Kyoto hopefuls had never existed in the first place. Onidira, who had defeated both of them in the first game, won two games in a row, defeating Ishikura in the middle game to take the lead. However, there was an unexpected turn of events when Shinohara, who appeared as the general, defeated Onidira who in turn faced Hondo. The two sides glared at each other as they were locked in a battle between the two generals. Definitely Okinawa, beaches and snorkeling definitely Hokkaido, hot springs and skiing. Each of them clenched their fists while chanting out random words that relate with each destination. When both of their raised fists were brought down, their hands were each at PAR it's a match. I'd like to say they're laugh it off, but they stop moving and take a break. They're just deciding where to go on a school trip, but the tension is unbelievable. First, P.A.R., then, rock, paper, scissors. The second clash. Sudo made a powerful P.A.R. Shinohara, on the other hand, threw a brilliant par for the second time in a row. I got it. It's Hokkaido. The Hokkaido group shouted in unison. What are you doing, Sudo? Damn you. I don't want to get in the way, but the only vote in this class should be Hokkaido. Now if some votes were gathered for Okinawa or Kyoto, there would be trouble. Horikita understood that this was not the kind of atmosphere in which to say such a thing, and she looked somewhat dismayed. The third round of voting was held, and everyone operated their tablets at once. Results of the third round of voting 39 votes for Hokkaido 0 votes for Kyoto 0 votes for Okinawa The third vote was unanimous, so the second question is clear. While about half of the voters remained dissatisfied with the results, the third round of voting was successful in achieving unanimity through a fair fight according to the established rules. 
Although I couldn't get my heart's desire of Kyoto, I'm very much looking forward to Hokkaido, and depending on what happens in the other classes, Kyoto and Okinawa are still possible. Anyway, no matter where we end up, it's a subject that makes me look forward to the school trip. Now, let me move on to the third question. Chibashira Sensei's demeanor hadn't changed since the beginning, but there was a slight change in the tone of her voice when she uttered the next question. Question 3. Instead of the private points that are paid out according to class points each month being reduced to zero, three random students in the class will be given protection points. Alternatively, the number of private points awarded could be halved, and a specific student could be awarded a protection point. If neither of these options is desired, the bottom five students in the next written exam will receive zero private points. No matter which option is chosen, the period of private point forfeiture will continue for six months. Unlike the previous two questions, this one encompassed major advantages and disadvantages within the class. In option one, the payback is greater because of the larger number of private points you lose, but you also cannot overlook the fact that they are given to random students. Protection points are a very powerful boon, but depending on your point of view, there are some students who will end up not needing them for three years. If they are given to such students, they may end up being a waste of private points. Option 2 is also not cheap, as the amount of private points transferred is halved. Moreover, only one student will be granted protection. However, being able to choose any student is an important factor. Option 3 is to minimize the loss of private points as much as possible. This would be the option you would choose if you find the protection points too expensive or if you don't need them in the first place. However, you should not forget that even though you have 5 players you still have to bear the disadvantages. In addition to calculating the profit and loss, it is also necessary to consider the class situation. Some students may have a lot to say, but there is no other way but to vote first. Before we vote, let's talk about the case where there is unanimity on option 2, the option to grant to a particular student. If the vote is unanimous on this choice, we will move on to the next option where we will continue to determine one person without clearing question 3. You remember the example, don't you? The interval will be used to select one student and collect votes for or against granting it to that student. If the vote is unanimous in favor, the student will receive a protection point. If the vote is unanimous against, the student will no longer have a chance in that question. Then, the remaining 38 students will discuss and select one candidate. We will have to repeat the question in such a subdivision, taking the approval and disapproval again. Based on those results, we will announce the results of the first round of voting. Results of the first round of voting 12 votes to grant 3 random people 5 votes to select and grant 1 person 22 votes to not grant anyone. The results of the first round of voting seemed to indicate that the majority of people were willing to meditate on some of the inconveniences and give up their protection points. That may be so, since the 5 students who will lose their private points are already determined to be the bottom 5 in the written exam. For those students who don't fall into that category, it's risk-free. On the other hand, some of them might think that it's more beneficial to gain protection points if they know that they won't get private points for six months anyway. Hey, wait a minute. I don't understand something about this. Me neither. If we don't get protection points, we'll only lose five people. Ike and Sato were the first to speak up, as they were students who seemed to fall into the bracket for lowest grades. Well, it can't be helped, can it? It's a bit like not getting your private points transferred for six months. In addition, random is a low probability, and specific is unlikely to be given to me so please sacrifice yourself, Kanji. Sudo can only confidently suggest that since he's already out of the bottom five in the class for academics. That's not fair. Even I need a lot of private points right now. You're not going to tell me you need money to go on dates with Shinohara, are you? I mean, well, what does it matter to you? He didn't seem to be bothered by the fact that his use of the money was exposed, and it seemed to be a matter of life and death. It's settled, it's settled. It's unanimous that there will be no grant. I can't have that. Then you should study. That'll solve it, right? H. Hey. I. Just can't agree with what Ken says. He's asking too much. Of course it's important to study and break out of the lower ranks, but no matter how many points you get, you can't change the fact that five people will be sacrificed. I understand what you're saying, 
but it's too early to be pessimistic. We just need to minimize the number of private points we lose and we can all make up for the burden. The remaining 34 students should be able to make up for the bottom five's private points that will be lost each month. This way, only certain students won't feel dissatisfied, right? In simple terms, if one student earns 50,000 points per month, then 250,000 points for five students will be lost. The remaining 34 students get 1.7 million points, which, if divided by 39 and rounded down to the nearest whole number, comes to 43,589 points. The loss of points is unavoidable, but each person would only lose about 6,500 points. Even if that lasted for six months, the stress on each student would be minimal. Well, that's fine then, I don't really want to share, but I suppose I could help Kanji if he really needs it. Shudo seemed to be dissatisfied, but he was willing to help Aiken. Any way he could. As many of the students wished to not be granted, they naturally began to agree on the direction to stick with option 3. However, in the midst of all this, Yasuk raised his voice. Horikita-san, do you think it's best to choose no grant? That's a tough one. It's a pretty troubling option, to be honest. Protection points can be a very powerful tool to prevent expulsion. But, the same can be said for private points. I wonder if Hiratakun thinks differently. It's only one opinion, but I think I should get protection points for this question. For all three of us, of course. If you don't get any private points for six months, it's going to hurt a lot. Not only will it put a lot of stress on your daily life, but it could also affect your special exam if the situation warrants it. The possibility that private points could make the difference between winning and losing cannot be denied. If something unforeseen happens, we can protect three people. The timing of when you can get protection points is quite limited, plus this is a valuable commodity that can't be taken lightly. I couldn't help but understand why Yasuk is somewhat passionate about this. The value of the protection points that can prevent expulsion is actually up to 20 million private points. It's not often that you get the chance to get them for three people. Especially for Yasuk, who cares about his friends, it's a value that can't be replaced by money. The destination of the school trip was a different story, one that was not easily agreed upon. It's hard to influence the outcome of the class in any destination, but this protection point choice is a problem for the whole class. If we get it, it may save someone else's life. Sorry, but let me have my say. Kaisei stood up and expressed his opinion. For the next six months, we're going to increase our class points, right? Of course. There's never a good time to stagnate in your quest for a higher class. 50 for this special exam, and 100 points if we place high in the cultural festival. Assuming the sports festival increases similar points, by the end of the semester, you might have more than 200 points, or even 300 points depending on the situation. Can I assume that? I suppose we will. If we increased the class points by 300 points by the end of the year, our class points would recover to the point where he could peak at 1000. If that happens, the total amount of private points given out in 6 months will be about 50% more than now, about 20 million points. If you think about it, the maximum value of one protection point is equivalent to 6 months of class income. It's a beautiful figure that seems to have been calculated. However, if you choose 3 protection points here, you can get about 7 million private points per protection point. It's a very fine line, isn't it? And the most unlikely one, giving one instead of three looks like a good combination of advantages and disadvantages, but it is actually the least costly and hardest to choose. However, it is the only one that has the advantage of being able to be given to a specific student, which is probably an important factor. However, if you decide to give it to any one student, you will naturally have to follow up with a unanimous vote. If this choice is bypassed and passed carelessly, there will be a possibility of a dispute over who to grant it to. So the idea of prioritizing private points is an offensive strategy, while the idea of prioritizing protection points is a defensive strategy, right? Kushida asks as she tries to sort out the situation, and the three people who are currently sitting in their seats nod almost simultaneously. But if we end up not using the protection points, then we risk that it was an expensive purchase, right? Of course, I'm fine with that, it would be inevitable to talk about it, too, to keep that fact known. Yeah, after all, if you never use it, it's equal to nothing. Of course, 
there will be a sense of security and peace of mind that comes with owning a protection point, but, it may or may not be worthless. Even if it ends up being unnecessary in its original use, it can be used as a strategy to intentionally consume protection points to launch a surprise attack or to use it as a self-destruct mechanism. You might even be able to use them for offensive purposes, not simply for protection. I can understand why Kaisei pushes that there are many ways to use protection points. It's a great advantage to be able to avoid expulsion from the school. However, we won't know what the special exams will be until we have the full picture. There is no guarantee that we will have the opportunity to use it effectively in the future. But this question, or rather the special exam, is deeper than I thought. Even though the content of the question is the same for all the classes, the depth of the question changes depending on the rank of the class and the situation. If the class points are equal to zero, then it is unanimous to choose to get three protection points without any trouble. It was a good opportunity for the other classes to follow suit. On the other hand, for class A, which is in sole possession of first place, it would be a more expensive purchase than the other classes. On the flip side, the first and third options can be seen as somewhat inconvenient choices for class A then Yukamurakan. You are saying that we should grant protection points to three students? Isn't there a risk with it being random? In order to make a final confirmation and narrow down the options, Horikita tries to get a word in edgewise. You misunderstand. The option I'm recommending is the second. The one that grants a protection point to one student. Horikita shows surprise at the development of wanting option two which was thought to be the least likely. Does that mean, for lack of a better word, that I should grant it to you? I'd honestly be happy if you did. But that's not realistic. I think you'd want me to grant choose someone worthy of it, because that's basically what all of us would do. If we asked for a show of hands, even a simple one, it wouldn't be surprising if the entire class raised their hands. It's hard to pick out a specific person. But no matter how much of a bargain it is, I don't know how. Well giving protection points to three random people will work. You seem to have a clear idea of who you should give them to. Who do you want to give them to? If you want to make a strategic decision, Horikita-san, I'm thinking of no one but you. Me. Correct. Right now, you're the leader of this class, and I have no complaints about your abilities in OAA. Obviously, you'd be targeted by Sakayanagi and Ryuan at the very least. It's not surprising to think that those two would try to expel you without mercy. It's best if we protect our leader first, then worry about the rest of us later. Normally, there would be some animosity, but naturally the classmates listened. Because he had a solid reason, not a random one. That's not the only reason. Normally, when you hold a protection point, there is a risk of loosening up. There is also the risk that you will not take it seriously, thinking that you are safe. I'm sure you're not that kind of person. I feel quite strongly about that. It's not just a matter of giving it to someone who has the ability to do it, but someone who can do more for the class after being given it. That's what Horikita is, according to Kaisei. I understand what you're saying, but, it's an expensive purchase. This option will result in losing half of our private points for six months. They feel like they're losing money because they think they're just losing private points. This is an upfront investment. Horikita will turn it into more class points than you pay for with this option. It's easier to think that way, isn't it? Even so, it could crash, you know. I don't believe we can beat class A without taking a risk. I've been fighting at this school for a year and a half myself. Hmph, <laughs> that's valid, isn't it? I agree with your current proposal, Glasses Khan. Koenji, who we had thought would never be involved in this special exam, verbally showed his approval. For the amount of protection points we give up, we can have the Horikita girl work harder than anyone else. You have a protection point, but you don't seem to be working hard. Hard work is something ordinary people do, you know. I'd rather sit back and let you people handle it. It's great that Koenji took a passive approach to this exam. I assumed he was going to be the biggest hurdle. Personally, I was thinking of option 1 or 3, but I agree with Kaisei's presentation. More importantly, if I'm going to voice my disagreement, I need to have a good reason. It's hard to say that it's for the good of the class if it's simply because it has to do with private points. In the atmosphere created by Kaisei, the next voting period arrives. Results of the second round of voting zero votes to grant three random people 39 votes to select and grant one person zero votes to not grant. 
Anyone it turns out that Kaisei's idea was adopted after successfully sewing through the gap. However, it's a little troublesome to choose a candidate right away, since there's a rule that there should be an interval between the choices. This time, there were no students who objected to giving Horikita a protection point, so the students were free to speak and kill time during the interval. It was decided that Horikita would run as a candidate and become a specific person, without the need to hold a vote on who to recommend. The vote was unanimous with 39 votes in favor of Horikita without any disturbance. It was a challenge that I thought would be difficult, but the fact that it was passed more smoothly than I expected was significant. This concludes question 3. From now on, for the next 6 months, all private point transfers will be half price equally for everyone, but a protection point for Horikita will be granted at this time. Of course, she couldn't make use of it in this special test, but this succeeded in giving Horikita, the leader of the group, valuable protection. It was not a cheap purchase, but it was not too expensive either. Question 4 One of the following rules will be applied to the class in the written exam at the end of the second semester. Choices increased difficulty increased penalty decreased reward these are nasty choices. None of them are a advantage to the class. If it had been a time when private conversation was allowed, there would have been a lot of grumbling. Results of the first round of voting 6 votes for increased. Difficulty 18 votes for increased penalty 15 votes for decreased rewards all of these are basically options you don't want to choose, and the votes are split. After that, there was a heated debate between the students who were confident and those who were not, and it seemed that the question would be prolonged, but in the second round of voting, the choice of increased penalty led to a unanimous result. Horikita's strong persuasion that it would not be difficult to avoid penalties if we worked diligently also seemed to have worked. Part 3 With a time limit of 5 hours, we reached the final question in about an hour without a hitch. I'm sure many of the students thought that they would be able to complete the last question with ease. Once the last question was completed, the special exam would be cleared and 50 class points would be awarded. However, if there was one concern, it would be the homeroom teacher's condition. Now, then, this, is your last question. As each question progressed, it was obvious that Chibashara Sensei's complexion was changing for the worse. It was clear to the students that she had finally reached its peak and they were looking pale. Sensei, are you okay? Even though it was before the question was announced, private conversation was not allowed. However, Yasuk couldn't overlook it and raised his voice. Excuse me. No, it's just that you're obviously not feeling well. Is that so? I'm not sure what you mean Hirata. She didn't seem to be faking it. In other words, she's not even aware that she's not looking right herself. Or maybe. I should say that I'm not conscious of it. Anyway, once he was told that this was not the case, Yasuk had no choice but to back off. The teacher in the back of the room didn't move either, so the final question would probably begin. But one thing is for sure, the next question should have a lot to do with Chibashara Sensei's current physical condition. I'm about to display the final question. Prepare to vote. Chibashara Sensei held her breath as she touched her tablet. And so, the final question was displayed in front of us. Question 5 Gain 100 class points in exchange for one classmate being expelled. If the vote is unanimous in favor, identify the student who will be expelled and vote for him slash her. Choices for against the last question has only two options, the fewest so far. At first glance, one might think that the fewer the number of options, the easier it would be to come to a consensus. In reality, however, the number of choices does not have much influence. If there are a lot of strangers in the room, or if it's not possible to have a discussion, having a large number of choices can be a disadvantage, but in our class, we can have a lot of discussions. The important thing is always the content of the question. Expulsion or class points. Here we had one of the worst questions I could have imagined. The students, who are not allowed to speak, must have been upset when they read the question in their minds. If they voted in favor of the question, one of their classmates would be expelled. Under normal circumstances, the entire class should have voted. No without hesitation. Although 100 class points is not a small number, most of us would prefer not to have one of our classmates expelled in return. If this were a majority vote, it would probably end with a majority against in one vote. However, the past four questions have proven that it does not work that way. That's the simple but difficult part of unanimity. The 60 second count will now begin. 
Students are asked to begin voting. Chibashara Sensei called out in a shaky voice. No extra time is given, and the 60 second voting period begins. If the vote is unanimous in favor of the proposal, it'll inevitably lead us down a dangerous path. Again, of course, almost none of the students would want that to happen. 100 class points because it's not so much a need that must be earned. If this had been in the third semester of my senior year, with only one or two more special exams to go, I would not be in the same state of mind as I am now. In a close race for one point, the value of those 100 points would skyrocket. At that time, it could have been a battle between two ultimate choices. However, the situation is different now. This is not a time when almost everyone would hesitate to vote against. Still, it is true that there are a number of concerns, including Koenji. That's why I took my hands off my tablet and took my time to think. According to the agreement with Horikita, my role in the first round of voting is to vote for option 1, no matter what the issue may be. But if 38 people, including Horikita, are voting against it now, it is better to vote against it without an interval and combine them into 39 votes. This is an issue that should be finished quickly, without giving any unnecessary space. There is no guarantee that students will not be swayed by the 100 points if you interrupt the discussion even once. I decided that this was the only question where I didn't need an interval. After close to 60 seconds, I see a notification that all the votes have been cast. All have voted and will be informed of the results. Despite the obvious anomaly, Chibashara Sensei kept her posture and continued to proceed. Results of the first round of voting 2 in favor 37 against not unanimous, Huh? I took my finger off the button and quietly looked at the results. Chibashara Sensei, who should be reading out the results, remained motionless, staring at the monitor as the students did. The results are surprising, and the votes can't be described as split. Chibashara Sensei, please proceed. The teacher cautions Chibashara Sensei from behind, who is dribbling out time, albeit for a few seconds. Ah, uh, I apologize. T the results are two votes in favor. 37 against. Since the vote was not unanimous, we'll go into an interval. Two votes in favor? Hey, who the hell voted in favor of that? Are you kidding me? Pseudo's strong gaze was unilaterally directed at Koenji. Although Koenji had made some comments about protection points, he hadn't really stood out much, but the content of this question was probably the only thing that made him stand out. Of course, that was Pseudo's idea, but I'm sure many of the Students agreed with him. Which way did you vote, Koenji? Do I have to answer that? If you can't answer, it means you voted in favor, right? Don't be so judgmental, red hair kun. In the first place, according to Hori Kita Girl, you should be allowed to make any choice in the first round of voting. I don't think you have any right to complain about which one you put in, do you? Pseudo becomes blatantly unhappy after receiving a good argument. Even if one vote was Koenji, that means there's another guy who voted in favor, right? Ike focused on the part of the vote that remained even if Koenji was excluded. That's definitely a problem, too. Who the hell is that? Pseudo barked in annoyance, as if he had no idea who the other person was. Don't panic. One of the people who voted in favor is Ayanaka Jikan. What? Oh, Ayanaka Ji voted in favor? How can you say that, Suzun? I've been keeping it a secret up to this point. But before this special exam started, me and him had made a pact regarding voting. Whatever the content of the question, I've arranged it so that the first vote will not be unanimous. As we reached the last question, Horikita mentioned the contents of our prior meeting. Surely there is no advantage to keeping it hidden when we get to this stage. It's obviously more wasteful to spend time and effort trying to figure out who the one vote is. To avoid unanimity on an unexpected choice, yes. Yasuk added a few words to make it easier to understand for the students who didn't fully understand. I guess so, what's that about? But if that's the case, you should have told me about it. Earlier. Not so fast. The first round of voting, when you're not allowed to talk, is an important opportunity to get a proper idea of what your classmates want to choose. If they knew that I was planning to prevent the vote from being unanimous from the start, some students might just vote randomly. I wanted to avoid that. It was his role to vote for the first option. I would vote for the second option. That's why only one person actually voted in favor. Looking around the classroom, Horikita speaks to that someone. It's a bit of a radical question, 
but it's up to the individual to decide which way to vote. I don't think it's wrong in itself to vote in favor in order to grab class points, but I think we should all vote against it as a class. If you have any objections, I would appreciate it if you could raise them here. Normally, the student who had voted in favor of the proposal would have come forward at this point. But no matter how long we waited, no one answered Horikita's question. How long are you going to keep your mouth shut, Koenji? Fufu. As I said before, I don't want you to assume that I'm in favor of this. What the hell? I know you're just messing around anyway. Since it's Koenji we're dealing with, he might have been amused by Pseudo's anger, only provoking him for entertainment. If the vote is unanimous in favor, the vote to expel one person from the class will begin. In other words, someone wants to get 100 class points for expelling one of their classmates. That would attract attention and criticism in a bad way. I really don't want anyone to think that someone is thinking that way. I've had enough dash calm down, Shudokan. It's only the first round of voting, there's no need to be particularly upset. Okay, but still? I don't like that someone actually voted in favor for this option. It's your choice to interpret it that way. But we have no proof that it was Koenji Khan. I also interpreted it to mean that whoever voted in favor of it was sorry for not coming forward. If they vote no on the second ballot, it will be unanimous. That should be enough. The issue was cleared. Horikita seemed to have decided that there was no need to take extra time. As I was thinking to myself, not pursuing it would be one of the best choices we could make right now. There's no need for further discussion on this issue. Come on. Let's finish it in the next vote. Looking at the calm Horikita, Shudo tapped both cheeks once as if to discipline himself. And with a bit of unrelated chit-chat, it was time for us to vote for the second time. We will now begin the 60-second voting period. The 4K UHD screen switches to show the in favor and against buttons. It seemed that the voting was completed in approximately 20 seconds. Voting is now complete and the results of the second vote will be displayed. Results of the second round of voting 2 in favor 37 against up until now, the special exam didn't create any strong tension. However, the moment the results of this second round were announced, the room went silent. Once again, the result was two votes in favor. This meant that the vote had not shifted. Even after the explanation given earlier, this fact was conveyed from an inorganic monitor. Wait a minute, what does this mean? The person Horikita looked at as she said this was, of all people, me. Why did you vote in favor for the second time? That was the question. The students, including Pseudo, who understood the explanation, also looked at me. I voted against both the first vote and just. Now, in the second vote. What? Ayanakaji was supposed to vote for option 1, right? Yeah, but because of the content of the question, I took the liberty of deciding that it would be better to vote for the against option. I didn't tell you that because I didn't want to cause any unnecessary conflict. If there were two people in favor of the first vote, the upset would increase. Now they can. No longer play it off as a joke. Even Horikida, who had carried herself calmly throughout this entire process, was a little distraught. So, there are at least two people who think it's in favor of the current question, is that it? Horikida puts a hand to her lips and thinks. She would probably like to stop and think about it, but the interval is precious. If you're going to continue to vote in favor of this, could you please tell me exactly why you're in favor of it? As you can see, all but two of the results show that 37 people are against the idea. If you want everyone to vote in favor, I'd like to see a reasonable presentation. The basis for swaying the vote is discussion. If more people decide that there are greater advantages to voting in favor, the vote will naturally shift. On the other hand, if there is no discussion, it is not easy to sway votes. However, the answer to this question was silence from everyone. Hey, hey, Horikita-san. It's okay, right? No one is going to drop out of the class, right? Kushida was worried, but she couldn't stand the silence and asked Horikita that question. As I said before, my policy is to not let anyone drop out of school. Horikita reiterates her determination, but after that, the silence continues. It's easy to utter the first and last compulsion, but I don't know who's against this. But I want you to listen carefully. Yasuk stands up and speaks gently but forcefully. You shouldn't choose to cut off your classmates in order to gain class points. I don't think the points gained from such a choice are worth anything, even if they were 500 or 1000 class points. 
The most important thing is that there are other ways to achieve class points. A well-deserved appeal from the man who would suffer the most from such a sacrifice. 37 out of the 39 of us understood that to some extent, as Yasuk had said, they should be willing to let go of 100 class points if the price to pay is a valued classmate. But whether or not that is their true intention is another matter. Even before the first vote, the outcome of the vote was heavily influenced by silent peer pressure. There must be some students in the class who think that they will never be expelled. In such a situation, it would not be surprising if some of them really thought that they would not mind sacrificing their classmates. Very well, it's getting interesting in this special exam. This is quite enjoyable. Koenji started laughing with amusement and continued. I thought you were going to vote against me in the second round. Koenji stated without seeming to take offense. So it was you, Koenji. Koenji Kun, is that true? I'd like to stop you from becoming the boy who cried wolf here because that would cause a nasty mess. Hori Kitta reaffirmed, prioritizing clarifying whether he was really against it or not first. Don't worry, I made sure to vote in favor the first time and the second time. Can you tell me why? The answer is simple. You'll get 100 more class points right? That means you'll inevitably get more private points every month, so there's no reason to vote against. You've got to be kidding me. You think class points are more important than your friends. You have a funny way of saying things. You didn't seem like that kind of person when you first came here. Shut up. I'm voting in favor, so of course I'll take that into consideration. What the hell do you think your friends are? Friends? I've never thought of any of you as my friends. So you're saying you're not going to change your vote to the other side at the next vote. Of course not. I'll probably continue to vote in favor if things stay the same. I'm sure Hori Kid a girl doesn't want to just run out of time, right? Ha. Huh. Don't think things will go as you wish, Koenji. If that's what you're planning to do, we're not going to let you get away with it either, Suzun. Let's all vote in favor and get Koenji expelled. It may have been a spur of the moment answer, but it's also true that this question has a nasty aspect in terms of the four choice. We can unite to get rid of the bad guys who say that their classmates should be expelled. People subconsciously choose what they want to believe and then justify the reasons they chose. I don't want to expel anyone, but I have to. Because they're holding back the class. The brain starts to work to justify that the person should be expelled. It also swallows convenient logic, conspiracies, and misinformation. I wish everyone would vote in favor, but don't think you can get me expelled for it. Isn't that right? Hori Kida girl. If Koenji came forward as one of the people who voted in favor of the question, it would be natural for people around him to make a fuss about being expelled. There was no way this man didn't understand that. However, Koenji was in a different situation than the rest of the students. He's right. We can't expel Koenji Kun. What do you mean? I made a promise to Koenji Kun before the island exam started, remember? I promised Koenji Kun that if he took first place in the uninhabited island exam, I would protect him until he graduated. I'm sure the students remember that exchange. I didn't expect him to get first place either. But thanks to you getting first place in that exam, our class is now all the way in contention for class B. That achievement is immeasurable. Yeah, that's true, but not if you're trying to bring the class down. I'm not sure I'd call it bringing the class down. I'm just freely choosing the choices that are entrusted to me. You can't assume that voting in favor is bad, can you? If the question was, you may remove one student if you wish, you could argue that voting for is just evil. However, in this case, instead of expelling students, they would receive class points. Although it is difficult to put a concrete figure on the value of one student, no one has the right to deny Koenji's calculation of the benefits of voting yes. As long as there is a good argument and a promise, there is no way Horikita can cast a single vote for Koenji's expulsion. Fine then. Let's go back on our word. If Koenji doesn't think of his classmates as friends, no one will be bothered if he gets expelled. I can't. I'm not going to break my promise to him. I guess you're right. No one will trust a class leader who doesn't keep his promises. I trust you more than anyone else right now in that sense, Horikita girl. This is yet another example of Koenji's troublesome side. Now that this has happened, Horikita must first persuade Koenji at all costs. But there is still plenty of opportunity to do so. Even if Koenji believes that Horikita will not betray him, 
that does not mean that Koenji is 100% protected. The possibility that Horikido will cut Koenji loose must be in the back of his mind. In other words, Koenji will change his attitude if the seeds of such a move appear. If that happens, Horikida, who is beginning to become aware of her role as a leader, immediately cuts Koenji, who has responded with results, will affect her status later on. That choice will be a major hindrance in the future. If you're not going to cut Koenji, then what are you going to do, Suzun? Give me some time to think about it. That would have been fine if the only one in favor was Koenji. We can't overlook the part that there is one more person in favor who hasn't come forward. I wonder the person who voted in favor, excluding Koenji Kun, can come forward and tell us. If we don't know that, we can't move forward. But the only response we got was a long, deep silence. If you come forward here, there is a fear that you will be threatened and even argued unnecessary as well as Koenji. Rather, they may receive more frowning upon than Koenji. The answer other than silence does not come. Eventually, time ran out, and the third round of voting would come, whether we wanted it or not. Fortunately, there was no limit to the number of times we could vote. As long as time permits, there will be a chance to make the vote unanimous every 10 minutes. Results of the third round of voting 2 in favor 37 against as in the past two rounds, two people voted in favor, Koenji, and someone we can't see. For now, many of the students still put more weight on Koenji's side, but I wonder if they will eventually look in other directions. It won't be long before we are faced with the reality that there are students who have not come forward and continue to vote in favor of the project with their eagerness and vigilance. We are about to face the danger of anonymity, a danger that we had hoped to avoid the most. But the first priority is to deal with Koenji. Unless the votes in favor of the project are reversed, there will be no solution. We can't ignore the other person who is voting in favor. I think there are certain beliefs that only the person who is so adamantly in favor of the project has. If that's the case, then I'll speak to Koenji Kun and anyone else I can't see at the same time. Not wasting any time in passing, Horikida began to gather her thoughts. 37 of us will continue to vote against this. And two of us will continue to vote in favor of it. The worst thing that will happen is that we will run out of time. Even then, we may lose class points, but we won't lose our friends. We can get through this special exam without anyone dropping out. The people voting in favor feel that the class points are a major advantage though, right? Even so, it isn't the end of the world. We can find other ways to achieve those class points. Horikida explains the risk of ending the exam in disagreement, citing specific gains and losses. Of course, the unseen one doesn't answer anything, but what about Koenji? Well, if we're going to run out of time, go ahead and vote in favor. Koenji tells Horikida to vote in favor, as if it were a matter of course. It's true that if the vote is in favor unanimously, we can move forward. But what awaits next is an even bigger hurdle, which of your classmates will be expelled. You don't think it'll be easy to get a unanimous vote either, do you? It's your job to put it all together, Horikida girl. Besides, having students drop out isn't such a bad thing, is it? That's not true. We shouldn't have expelled anyone. Before Horikida could argue with him, Yasuk told Koenji, I don't get it. You guys seem to be afraid of expelling students, but wouldn't it be easier mentally to see this as a positive? You can discard unwanted students at will. You can even get class points on top of that. If you change your mind a little, you'll say that in favor is really a great choice for the class. The other person besides myself who's voting in favor also knows that. It's a pointy way of thinking, but it's a good enough reason to cast your vote in favor. I don't think that's true, Koenji Kun. Losing someone from this class is not a positive thing at all. As if in response to Yasuk, Kushida also said that classmates should be prioritized. Other students, who had not spoken much until now, began to voice their objections at once. However, Koenji did not soften his attitude, but only smiled and chuckled. Koenji, who wanted to get the most out of the vote, did not respond to the discussion, and the fourth voting time arrived. Results of the fourth round of voting 2 in favor 37 against after tens of minutes of appeals with no effect, the third interval begins with a signal from Shibashira Sensei. What am I supposed to do? Damn, is there any way we could just punch him, knock him out and vote on our own? No, of course not. Let's think about this objectively for once. If we do that, 
Koenji Kun's thoughts might change. As Horikita wanted to avoid just following a parallel path, she was forced to try a different approach. What do you mean by objective? I mean, which of the three classes, excluding us, will choose in favor? Definitely Ryuan's class, they're going to cut out the right guy, aren't they? Sudo says without hesitation, crossing his arms at the back of her head. Many of his classmates seemed to agree with him, letting out mouthfuls of sure. From the way he thinks and acts, there is certainly a good chance that he will. Yes, it's certainly the most probable class, isn't it? On the contrary, Ichino-san's class will definitely not. I wonder if Sake and Aga-san's class will. Ryoan's class probably has the highest chance to vote in favor. Ichino's class will surely turn in the opposite direction. And Sake and Aga's class, which has the potential to be either. Coincidentally, the three classes all have different colors. An interesting result shared by the classmates. In this case, there is almost no discussion about Ichino's class, which is known to be good-natured. The focus of the conversation will be on Ryoan's class. I don't like the idea of being outclassed by Ryoan's class. We have a lot of momentum right now, and we're going to be one step ahead of them here, which means class B, right. That said, the difference won't be huge. Even without the current lead, the difference is 100 class points and one special exam is enough to regain the lead. I know what you mean. But I still have one thing to say. Akito had been quietly participating in the special exam but decided it was time to break his silence. It's unlikely. But it's also possible that missing these 100 class points might make us regret our choice, right? Miyaki, does that mean we have to get someone to drop out? Spoke up Haruka from her seat. Don't get me wrong. I'm clearly against it. She stared at Akito looking more annoyed than angry. I'm of the opinion that the best way to get to class A is without missing anyone from this class. That's why I think we need to understand the weight of a hundred points, and not take it lightly. What do you mean by that? It means that we all need to express our opposition after imagining a future in which this special exam is the turning point when graduation approaches. It was wrong to vote against it without preparation, that was Akito's opinion. Well when you put it that way, you have to vote against it without a second thought. The students find themselves in the shadow of such peer pressure and fail to look at the bigger picture. Koenji, I'm well aware of your success in the island exam. Even without your promise to Horikita, I think it's strange that you're choosing the vote to expel someone. In addition to Horikita and Sudo, Akito turns his thoughts to Koenji as well. But still, it's not something you can just annoy the class with as long as you want. Class points aren't the only thing that make up a relationship. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hmm. Closing his eyes, Koenji nodded deeply. Then, whether he was thinking about something or not, he opened his eyes and gave Akito a single glance. Of course. I have no idea what you're talking about. Think about how this school works. Everything is based on points earned. It has nothing to do with friendship or affinity. It's class points that determine the higher classes, and private points that are your personal assets. It's an inextricably linked evaluation system. I don't see anything wrong with agreeing to make that a top priority. You're a bit of an idiot, aren't you? You're the one who hasn't contributed to the class in almost two years. Just because you won. First place on an uninhabited island. Doesn't mean you can act like that all the time. I think you should look in the mirror, Red Hair Kun. I think it's clearer than ever which of us is the better tribute to the class. In reality, both of them were slow to contribute at the start. No, Sudo's portion is worse if you factor in the fluctuations to class points due to his behavior. Well, it's not the class points that are important. To me, Koenji's attitude in favor of the project had seemed untenable up to this point. However, Horikita did not miss this statement by Koenji. Class points are not important. Then for you, these 100 class points are not for moving up to class A, but for private points. That's why you keep throwing your support behind it isn't it? Exactly. I want to be in favor of it for private points. Sake, because in the two previous questions, I chose to have the amount of private points transfer for six months. I drank in the tears that it was necessary for you to protect me, but it's not going to happen this time. I want class points to compensate for the private points that will be lost. That turns out to be Koenji's reason for being in favor of it. For some students, they might. Resent the fact that he is trying to get them expelled for private points. However, 
Horikita saw this as an opportunity. Okay, Koenji kun, let's make a deal. It's not a bad deal for you, huh? That sounds interesting. I'd like to hear that presentation. Koenji welcomed the proposal without surprise, rather as if he had been waiting for it. If you vote against from now on, and then unanimous. Consent by opposition is granted, I will pay 10,000 private points on behalf of the school every month from now until you graduate. This would be the equivalent of 100 more class points for you, right? That would certainly make it meaningless for Koenji Kun to vote in favor of it. As expected of a Horikita girl, it didn't take you long to come to that conclusion. You were in favor of this proposal from the start, weren't you? That's what my vote is worth, you know. It's not impossible to raise the price, but I need the Horikita girl to be a reliable ally. Let's make a deal on those terms, shall we? We don't need to put this in writing, do we? We have Chibashira Sensei here. Of course, I don't expect you to go back on your word. The deal is done. Koenji's vote of approval seemed to be unmovable. He finally made a move and promised to vote against it. The fact that he dared to continue to vote in favor of the proposal and let Horikita bring it to him was a masterstroke. This is how the fifth vote went. The fact that Koenji made it clear that he was going to vote against the proposal must have had an effect on the one person who was invisible. It would not be easy for just one person to continue to express opposition, even if he or she is an anonymous person. In other words, even without persuasion, the vote has the potential to turn against it. However, results of the fifth round of voting one in favor 38 against Koenji switched his vote from for to against, but there was still one vote to expel a student. The real battle seems to start here. An anonymous, absolute in favor vote. In order to overcome this, we still need to find out who is voting in favor. But that is more difficult than anything else. The tablets are basically impossible to spy on, but if you want to see where you touch with your fingertips, you can. However, the school has anticipated this and the order of the choices is randomized from the beginning. It is impossible to check each other's finger movements because the choices are switched each time the vote is taken. There is no other way but to make do with the repeated intervals. Well, well, it looks like things aren't going to be easy. As I said, unless you are unanimous in your opposition, the deal you just made is null and void. I know, I know. If the vote is unanimous in favor, or if the time runs out, I'll just give up. As long as it's anonymous, there's no way to prove that Koenji isn't voting yes except by unanimous consent. He doesn't seem to think that he can get private points for any other option. If they vote for whatever they want here, the good news will disappear. It would be inconvenient for Koenji to make an enemy of Horikita. We had about three hours left. Despite her struggles, Horikita is making progress toward a breakthrough with a solid strategy. However, it is also true that we can't continue to be sidelined forever. We need to get this to a unanimous vote before the remaining time runs out. Until then, I'm just going to sit back and watch this war unfold, but can I give her some support? In between intervals, I coughed a couple of times. In the midst of all the chatter, no one pays any attention to an unconscious coughing fit. On the contrary, it is a cough that can be heard if you are aware of it. You know what, Horikita-san? Did you say something, Karuzawa-san? This is just a hunch of mine, but maybe you have an idea of who's voting in favor. Huh? Why do you think that? Horikita's face showed surprise at the unexpected point made by K. I just kind of thought so. The Horikita of the past would have taken it as a mere thoughtful remark. But now that the fact that K and I were dating was out in the open, that would begin to change. Yes, you're right. You're right Karuzawa-san. I think I might know someone who keeps voting in favor, what the hell, then, get on with it. Who is this guy, said Sudo as he jumped out of his seat. I can't tell you that. This special test is a poll of anonymous names. If you say a name just because you think of it, you'll never be able to take it back if you're wrong. But dash I know. That's why I think I need to be prepared. We'll have time to vote a few more times. If the number of votes in favor still doesn't reach zero, then I'll have no choice but to speak the name. I want you to wait, Horikita-san. I don't agree with you. As Horikita-san just said, there is no way to know for sure who is voting for whom this time. I don't think it's acceptable to name names just because you have an idea. Of course, I'm not talking nonsense just because I don't want anyone to drop out of school. You understand that, right? I agree with Hirata-kun. I don't think it's right to 
say something without absolute certainty. Kushida also leaked out anxiously, saying that she agreed with Yasuk. The students were filled with anxiety after the two's opinions. If Horikida misunderstands me in some way and says my name, I will be criticized. If they were told to vote in favor when they were voting against, it would be an untenable situation. If 38 people vote in favor, in a hurry to run out the clock, it will be inevitable that the named person will be discussed as a target for expulsion. I know, I know, that's why I haven't mentioned the name so far. But we can never just run out the clock. Isn't that right? I know how you feel. I'm not the same person I used to be, and I'm willing to make a choice if I have to. But it has to be 100%. Correct. I try to make a slight change to the situation, which is starting to get heavy. Horikita, besides the one you have in mind, is there any student you can think of who keeps voting in favor of this? No, I don't. I don't know, I just can't wrap my head around the fact that there are people who are so adamantly in favor of this other than Koenji Kun. Of course, it would be hard for anyone who agrees to openly come out. As Sudo stated before, if you voted in favor, you yourself would be put at risk of expulsion. Even if I can't say the name, I may know who it is. I'd like the person to raise their hand now, so we can avoid conflict. She asked again, as if to remind them. However, there was no response. Yasuk. I know you don't want to suspect anyone, but you have a wide range of friendships with both men and women, is there someone who might vote in favor or something? There isn't. I'm not lying, I really can't think of anyone. I see. What about you, Kushida? Even though I was talking to her out of the blue, she didn't show any strange reaction. In fact, Horikida turned her head slightly and showed a somewhat disturbed expression due to the fact I had asked her. UMM. I'm sorry Ayanakaji-kun. I'm with Hirata-kun, there's no girl that comes to mind. Kushida is the one who understands the class the best. I thought she might know a bit about the students who are unhappy with the class. Everyone knows that you care about the class more than anyone else, and that you're very accommodating. So if you get any idea, let us know, okay? Sure enough. Expectant eyes from the class turned to Kushida. UMM, hmm. I don't know if there's anything that comes to mind. But I'll let you know if I realize something. Sure thing. I have a feeling that the presence of people like Yasuk and Kushida is essential for this last special exam. Without the combined efforts of all of them, it would be difficult to break through this challenge by opposition. But such cooperation was futile, and the results of the sixth vote were also posted shortly after. Results of the sixth round of voting won in favor 38 against there was no change. We continued the same discussion. Results of the seventh round of voting won in favor 38 against results of the eighth round of voting won in favor 38 against the results continue to be the same, and the conversation becomes more and more silent. The eighth interval begins next. A little more than an hour had passed since the start of this question. With a loud bang, Chibashara Sensei stumbled and almost fell over. She pressed her arms against the podium as if she was going to fall down, and managed to prevent herself from collapsing. Ah. The discussion was cut and Chibashara Sensei, who had been standing on the podium the whole time, was breathing hard. As Sensei, it's all right, she said, and adjusted her posture as if she was trying to demonstrate she was all right. Chibashara Sensei stared at the students with vacant eyes, wondering what they were thinking. Eventually, she exhales heavily with some kind of determination. Teachers are not allowed to guide the students to a particular choice. Naturally, as for me, I would not do such an act. However, may I tell you an old story? Of course, it would take up a lot of your precious time. If you still don't mind, that is. Chibashara Sensei. The teacher's statement itself is not forbidden, but you won't get off scot-free either if you violate the rules. If I decide that you are guiding the class to protect them, you will face consequences. Yes. If you see any intentions towards choice induction, I am prepared to be punished. By answering that she understood, the monitor could only be silenced. As a matter of course, an unexpected suggestion from Chibashara Sensei who had never intervened in the special exam. It could be taken as a ray of light in this environment that had been at a standstill. Right now, we are suffering from this situation. To the extent that it doesn't affect our options, please let us hear what you have to say, Sensei. If there was some way to break the ice, Horikita said, that would be welcome. Of course. If Chibashara-sensei really wanted to talk about it, it wouldn't have mattered what Horikita said. 
but under the watchful eye of the monitor, direct interference must be avoided. I also attended the advanced nurturing high school, and I've taken this special exam when I was a student. Horikita and the rest of her classmates were surprised at the story being told for the first time. Sensei, did you say you also take this unanimous special exam? Yes, there were five questions, some with slightly different contents, but the last one you're facing right now is the same word for word. You can either drop out a classmate and gain class points, or you can protect your friends and not gain class points. The students turn to look at Shibashira Sensei's statement that she has experienced the exact same special exam. One thing is for sure, that is to give it your all with no regrets. To choose yes, no, or to run out of time. Whichever choice you decide to find a path that will not leave you regretting the outcome, there is still time. For the first time, everyone listened as Chibashara Sensei spoke to the students with real emotion. She was not guiding them to choose any of the options, nor was she offering any solutions. It was the kind of advice a teacher can give when they are on the edge. The teacher who was listening in the background didn't tell her that she was breaking the rules, and he listened until the end. I don't know if this will change the outcome. However, I made sure that I provided the students with the words to face this special exam again. It's not a good idea to waste the remaining time in the interval, even with unexpected backup from Chibashara Sensei. In order to increase the odds by even 1%, Hori Kitten needs to stay on track. It's getting close to the time when you'll have to make up your mind, but before you do, let me talk to you one more time. I'm not your enemy. I'm on your side. The name of the advocate must have crossed her mind many times. Their face, their voice, their eyes, their breath. Horikita continues to try her best to persuade them, never letting the class know who the specific person is. She must be asking herself over and over again. Shouldn't I just tell them the name? But she still doesn't say anything because she sincerely wants to bring that person over to her side. It was like a cry of grief. In response to this, the ninth vote was cast. The result. Results of the ninth round of voting one in favor 39 against as expected, the vote in favor remained in deadlock. Only one person. There is one student who is hanging on to the 100 class points. No, there is someone who is clinging to the right to expel someone. This is the real truth that only I, or perhaps only two people including Horikita, are aware of. It's safe to say that a certain person's thorough vote of approval continues to linger. However, there is no way to objectively confirm that person's opposition in this situation. Horikita said that if time ran out, she would be forced to speak the name.